Welcome, everyone, to another exciting edition of School for Startups Radio. Thanks for listening today, and I hope you're having a great day and growing some sort of exciting business. We're going to give you the motivation and the best practices to do it. I am incredibly honored and excited to introduce you to Jack Nadell. He is, well, first of all, he was a very decorated World War II pilot, flew 27 missions over Japan, won the Air Medal with four Oak Leaf Clusters, the Distinguished Flying Cross, unbelievable service to our country. He came back after that and started a long international business career, and he has done just about everything that you can imagine. He's published five different books. He's been an adjunct professor of business, and he's won some pretty impressive awards, uh, including being voted into the Hall of Fame for specialty advertising, being chairman of the International Trade Association, and also, this is so cool, being one of Ronald Reagan's trade members who went on a trade mission to Japan with Ronald Reagan in the 1980s. He's now about 90 years old and still working. He says he's retired, but I don't believe it for a second. Jack Nadell, it's an honor to meet you, sir, and welcome to the show. Well, it's my pleasure, Jim. Nice to, nice to talk to you. Well, you're not retired. Why do you lie and say you're retired? Well, I, ne- I never, I, 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 no, I said retirement is just, uh, really doing what I want to do and doing it on my schedule. Okay, uh, but you're still working that, 24 hours a day, aren't you? Well, I'm 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 writing and I'm teaching and uh, uh, doing a few lectures and some Skype interviews and I uh, I'm having I'm having a lot of fun with it. But interestingly, Jim, I've 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 found something that I think is 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 kind of fascinating. Because like everybody else, when I started my career, the goal was really first to make a living and then to make enough to live in comfort and then to take care of my family and uh, get into certain philanthropic efforts. But now I find it's bigger than that. I, uh, I really do believe that the very economy of the United States uh, has a great dependency on the success of entrepreneurs. Well, the big businesses aren't out there creating jobs, Jack, so I think it's up to us entrepreneurs to get the economy going again. There's no other solution, is there? Well, I don't know of it. I, if there is, I don't know of it. I I don't know of any uh, government programs uh, that are going to do it. I don't know any corporations uh, that are putting any R&D uh, money into it because uh, the the tendency today is to get all the profits you can to the to the bottom line and get your stock up. Uh, and uh, I, I think when you come right down to it, it's up to each of us individually to try to satisfy our own goals and to find a way to get there. I agree so much. You know, you and I may not agree politically, but I believe that government is sometimes standing in the way of small business. I see so many regulations that don't make sense that are designed to protect the big guys. Do you agree with that? Are you also worried about government not being helpful enough? I'm, I'm really worried about uh, uh, many facets. I, 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 not being helpful. Uh, I, I think that uh, uh, this is the one issue that that politics don't have a position in. In other words, you want to get certain things done and you're uh, uh, a liberal or, or conservative and you join those groups and you, uh, you try to get people out to vote, which in itself is a huge, it was a huge job that, uh, uh, you know, that, that, that many times is unsuccessful. But this business of starting your own business, going into business, of creating a product or, or service, of making a profit at it, of, it's, it's uh, you know, it, it's, it, it's really up to you. The politics are different. I, I, 
I could spend hours speaking on both sides of the ledger because I've uh, run companies out of France and Switzerland and Hong Kong and uh, uh, and, and lived with, with their particular rules, some of which uh, were, were good and some of which, uh, many of which were not. Uh, so it, I, I just have yet to find uh, uh, a, uh, a politician or even for that matter, a uh, uh, a business person uh, that can anticipate everything and put it in a plan. And uh, I advocate uh, what I call targeted thinking so that you can have a goal and you can set your course for that goal and you can do all the things that are necessary. So the business of, of government and of unions and of Hey, that's beyond my pay grade. <laughs> you know, I wanted to ask you about your targeted thinking methodology. It's called the Nadell method. Can you explain this to us and how my entrepreneur should be using it? Yes, yes, very definitely. Uh, I, I, when I sat down to write th- this book that, that's currently out there called The Evolution of an Entrepreneur, uh, featuring uh, 50 of my best tips, for surviving and thriving in business, uh, I sat down with a specific goal in mind uh, to, to, to use it as a crash course for anybody who who, uh, who has the the uh, desire and the intelligence, etc. And uh, so, so I, I, I deliberately at the very beginning. Uh, I put down, first of all, my own qualification, which is a high school diploma and, and, a, and a lot of drive. Uh, and, uh, and you know, by various practical experiences, being brought up on the streets of New York. Uh, and uh, But then very quickly go to the what I call the Nadell Methods, which is uh, five uh, points. Uh, and it's and it can be read in ten minutes, uh, but I think it's essential and would avoid uh, countless uh, uh, failures and bankruptcies uh, in startups. And those five points, very briefly, are number one, of course, come up with the, with with the product or process, uh, but make sure it's something you really love to do. Uh, because you sp- you're going to spend your life doing it. Uh, secondly, and very important, that most people overlook, is do extensive research and see who's done it before you, because if it's a good idea, the odds are pretty good that somebody else thought of it before you. And there's some history, and why try to reinvent the wheel? Let's see what they did. Not that you're going to do the same thing, but see what the history is. You get past that, then the third thing is to uh, draw up a, a business plan of exactly how you want to do it, and keeping in mind that you want to uh, uh, be flexible enough to move with the times or into some unanticipated uh, uh, possibility. The thing is to execute the business plan and do it accurately and uh uh, with, uh, as I said, with a certain amount of flexibility. And I say that the fifth point is to survey what you've done, realize uh, how it happened, and pass it on. That is great. I love all five of those. On number two, I always joke that the last person who had an original idea was I'm Hopeteb, the guy that thought of the pyramid in 2500 BC. Uh, so I, I, I say that a little bit facetiously, but I really oh. agree with your point that all the good ideas have already been thought of. Is that true? Well, I, I have found that invariably to be the case. Uh, I would put a uh, a little blip on that, and that's the uh, the fact that that you can dramatically improve on it uh, right. with 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 current technology and current capabilities and current business conditions. 
That's why I tried the 50 tips that I gave to give 50 tips from my own experience, which goes back almost seven decades. Uh, but at the same time, I found a uh, story of something that happened in the past couple of years that illustrates the uh, that this is really uh, good for today uh, as well. So, uh, so there's nothing that's uh, that's out of date. Well, I love it. I think it's just great, great advice. Let me ask you about Ronald Reagan. You were honored to go with him to Japan. You sat down with the chairman of Sony and had interesting conversations. Did that trip change your political persuasion at all? And then secondly, did you find Ronald Reagan to be an entrepreneur at heart? Well, that again would take several hours. Uh, <laughs> not, not that I was an, an intimate uh, uh, friend of, 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 of President Reagan, but uh, uh, when I first I, I first met Ronald Reagan through his agent, who I used to play golf with, and and I said, you, you, does this does this does this guy really want to be governor? And he laughed. He says, this this guy has uh, much more capability than you're aware of, uh, and uh, that set me thinking. So I find that Ronald Reagan is, is kind of a contrast. Uh, uh, the way he handled the, uh, his, the problems at the outset of his first administration was uh, was not just brilliant but very gutsy. Uh, but uh, you know there were certain things I disagreed with him later. But I, I, once more, I I, I never uh, Ronald Reagan did not go with us on that trip. Uh, the Secretary of Commerce did. There was a fellow named Bill Verity, and and it was one of the most exciting ten days of my life because I did meet the presidents of Sony and Mitsubishi, and uh, uh, and I and I really got you know I've had kind of a uh, an interesting relationship with Japan, having uh, uh, flown over and having. Uh, been bitter enemies. In fact, I wrote my only novel about it called "My Enemy, My Friend," uh, which uh, which encapsulizes part of my experiences in Japan and part of these scenes. Uh, really came out of that trade mission. The purpose of the trade mission, and once more, the thing that one of the things I admired about uh, Ronald Reagan was it didn't matter uh, whether I was a Republican, a Democrat, a liberal, or or, or conservative. It had no, no bear. What was my experience, and what did I know about the project, and what could I contribute to it? I thought, I thought uh, that was really... Uh, because I, I, I had no idea how, how, how I was chosen, I don't, to this, to this day. But I'll never forget the experiences. And I think the thing that I pulled out of it, I forget whether it was the president of Mitsubishi or Sony, both of whom were brilliant, uh, I was uh, having a discussion with them. And I said something about making a deal. And he said, you know, that's the problem we have. You Americans want to make deals. Uh, we Japanese want to form a relationship. And from the relationship is where the, the deals come. And I, 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 as a matter of fact, it's it's been a principal feature. I now call it my three R's of business, which is uh, relationships, results, and rewards. And uh, I, I thought that was a, a fantastic bit of advice because uh, every deal starts with a relationship. That is fantastic advice for entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurs. I used to live in Japan. Jack, I used to work for the Japanese government and for Coca-Cola there, and I got my wow. MBA in Japan. And it's really interesting to watch the cyclical nature 
of life. You know, in 1980, when you went there in that time period, that decade, Japan was buying Rockefeller Center and the whole world. It seemed it's like it was Japan Incorporated. Exactly. And now, last quarter, I think their economy shrank 7% in one quarter. What can we learn from the Japanese experience, do you think? A very, very, very good question, Jim, because I thought about it uh, quite often. Uh, what what I learned from from that was is if you follow the ec- the economic progress of Japan, you find this remarkable uh, comeback from World War II uh, to where they became a dominant economic power in the ni- in the 1980s. And and the other thing that happened in in my uh, the negotiations with the Japanese was. Uh, their insistence that we respect their traditions. Now, their tradition of distribution was uh, uh, out of date. They, and so the, the net result is that everything in Japan was more expensive than any place else. So, for example, uh, if you went to Tiffany's in Japan and bought something, you could buy the same thing in New York for half the price at Tiffany's, the same, the same item. And that was because they, this is what they wanted us to respect, which is a kind of a cradle-to-the-grave philosophy, and that uh, that the there was the trader, there was the wholesaler, and there was the retailer, and they were interlocked. And... Uh, uh, one of the projects we had was to try to get one of our major discounters into a retail business in Japan because the balance of trade was so cockeyed that uh, we were buying so much from Japan as that we were selling to them. And uh, this 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 uh, resulted eventually in getting Toys R Us in Tokyo. And the result was they gobbled up about 10% of the Japanese toy business because uh, they did have a discount philosophy. Do you think the same thing of China? Are you also concerned about the huge trade deficit right now with China? I'll tell you, I love China. Uh, I have been, been there a number of times. And if I were 50 years younger, I'd be there right now. Uh, really the, doing think, business there is that the center of entrepreneurship in the world now not Silicon Valley it's not the center of our entrepreneurship but the, it, it's the it, it's the center with a with the, always remember that the government is involved it, uh, say having said that also understand that the, their government has evolved into the present moment. So that they're they're really up to date. In fact, I just yesterday the headline in the uh, Los Angeles uh, business section was that the the Chinese had just bought a major piece of property on uh, Wall Street Boulevard, in Los Angeles, which was the Robinson and May uh, uh, department store, uh, and for I think it was forty. Uh, close to fifty billion dollars, billion dollars, uh, and uh, uh, I think there's dramatic, dramatic opportunities going both ways, both retail and uh, and uh, import and export, uh, because there's a tremendous demand in China, and the Chinese are really, uh, as is most of the world, into uh, 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 American. Uh, 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 what can I call it? In, in today's America, right? Into into uh, these personalities and today's trends and today's fashion, fashion. So if you have a brand, and that's the that's the interesting word. That's the operative word is brand. Uh, uh, you can do unbelievable things in China. Jack, I don't know if you're a religious person or not, but I think that the coolest thing about entrepreneurship is that it uses the basket of skills given to you by God, Yahweh, Buddha, Muhammad, 
your genetics, whatever. It uses your skill set to the maximum. No other profession truly challenges you to grow the way entrepreneurship does. Do you agree? And what would you have done if you weren't an entrepreneur? Well, I, 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 the last question uh, Jim would be hard for me to answer because uh, I remember when someone asked me what I was going to do when I was discharged from the Air Corps, I said, there's one thing I'm not going to do is take orders. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, uh, and uh, whether, you know, whether there's a divine power or, or, or something totally unexplainable, there's something different than all of us, but the thing that I have discovered, even at my advanced years, is that uh, there's not one entrepreneur; there are dozens. Uh, if you uh, starting with what I call the genius entrepreneur, these are the uh, Stephen Steve Jobs of the world who create entire industries and have the guts to. Uh, uh, to carry it on, and like great painters or great writers, or uh, you can't keep them from doing it. I mean, you, you don't have to encourage them. You, you can't prevent them, and uh, neither I nor you nor anybody else can teach you anything. But that's one percent, maybe two percent. Right. And then there's what I call the successful world of entrepreneurs. Are, are guys like me who who. Uh, uh, have a, a certain amount of street smarts and a lot of discipline and, and a lot of uh, studying and a lot of uh, uh, intense concentration and what I call targeted thinking. Uh, and, and I think that makes up the bulk of a lot of people who have not done it don't realize they have that capability. Uh, so the 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 startup concept that you have, uh, I think, is absolutely brilliant because the uh, uh, this is this is where people need to be encouraged, and uh, I'll, I'll give you a bigger word: they have to be inspired. Uh, I I didn't have to; I didn't need anybody to inspire. I did I did what I did, but uh, uh, an inspiration. Uh, is is very is very key and very important, and the realization that you can do this. It is not that complicated, but you do have to work at it. If, in other words, if you're looking for stuff something that is stress free, then this is not <laughs> not the profession for us. Then, huh, Jack? What's the not best? at all? Not, yeah. not at all to me. Stress is is is, is part. Uh, I almost wrote wrote a book called Stress to Success. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Well, in your next decade, you should do that, Jack. We only have about a minute left. What's your favorite piece of advice you'd like to leave us with? Uh, I would say that my favorite piece of advice is is to find a way to depend on yourself. Uh, that outside forces aren't going to uh, materialize, that you're not going to win the lottery, uh, that you've got to find a way to make it on your own. And the best way to do it is to concentrate in an arena that is something that you thoroughly enjoy doing. Fantastic. Jack, thank you so much for being with us today. I hope everyone will go out and buy The Evolution of an Entrepreneur featuring 50 of my best tips for surviving and thriving in business. Jack, how else would you like people to get in touch with you or learn more about you? I, I Thank you for asking, Jim. Uh, uh, I've tried to construct a website that is very complete. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, right on the uh, home page is is a combination of uh, of the book and the video that I made that I call a crash course uh, in entrep- in entrepreneurship uh, for five dollars ninety nine cents, uh, and I stream it right off my own website, uh, my own publisher, my own distributor, but. Uh, uh, 
I, I also like to call myself probably the oldest living dweep in the world. <laughs> I don't believe that. Anyway, the website is jacknadel.com, N-A-D-E-L.com, right? That's it, jacknadel.com. Fantastic. Jack, thank you so much for being with us. Well, Jim, it's been been a pleasure, and uh, I look forward to listening to our interview and seeing what I've learned from you, because (laughs) I I learn from everything that I do. Excellent. That's a great philosophy for any entrepreneur. we got to be continually learning, um, and you're a fantastic example of that. Sir, thank you so much. Thank you for your service to our country, and thank you for being an entrepreneur and being with us today. You're most welcome. Take care. We've been taking care of business.